I'm joined now by Jacob Kierkegaard. He worked for the Danish Ministry of Defense and is currently a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. First of all, your reaction to what's happening in the Netherlands right now. What does this say that it appears Mark Rutte may stay in? Well, I think it's a good, it's a good day for Europe. It's a good day for the European Union. Uh, you had a generally uh, pro-European incumbent be likely re-elected. He lost some seats. Uh, his coalition partner, the Labour Party, was badly uh, uh, hurt. But the, all these votes, they didn't cross to the sort of populist right or the far right or whatever you choose to call Mr. Wilders. They went to other generally centrist pro-European parties. And it basically shows that the kind of automaticity almost that many expected, you had Brexit, you had Trump, the next domino to fall would, would be, uh, in this case, the Netherlands or some other European country. Well, that narrative uh, is probably not true. 81% voter turnout. Do you think in the end, many of the Dutch voters were put off by a lot of the rhetoric that was out there? Or do you think the pre-election polls were wrong, like some, in the other, some of the other elections, but just in the other direction? Well, I mean, this is actually not too far off the election, uh, pre-election polls. I mean, uh, Mark Rutte, the incumbent prime minister, was tipped to be uh, uh, reappointed or become his party, uh, was tipped to be the biggest party. And we saw a marginal increase for the uh, Freedom Party. And then this significant increases for a number of the other parties. So in that sense, the, the, the polling was actually about right. What the polling didn't get right was turnout. But this basically tells me that you know, there was a, I don't know if you can call it a silent majority, but certainly a lot of traditional pro-European centrist oriented voters in the Netherlands that turned out and voted. And they, by voting the way they did, they clearly rejected populism, uh, uh, the, the populism and anti-immigrant sentiment that is associated with Mr. Wilders and the Freedom Party. A lot of people around the world were watching this election. What does this say or could this impact in any way the upcoming elections in France and in Germany? No, I think the impact uh, is, is fairly direct. I mean, when, when we talked about you know, first Brexit, then Trump, that there was sort of a domino sort of sweeping over the Western world of, of populist party, anti-immigrant parties, in the case of Europe, anti-EU sentiment prevailing. Well, this is a powerful signal that goes in exactly the opposite direction. And it's very clearly, you know, it's a sort of an, those who projected an inevitable Marine Le Pen victory, uh, well, this is, this is a strong counter-narrative. There is nothing inevitable about that. And in fact, uh, I would argue that today or tonight, it looks uh, less likely than it did yesterday. You wrote recently, right-wing populism may be overblown in Europe. No, and I, and I think, I think uh, yes, I think this, this uh, election result fortunately uh, uh, vindicates that view because it shows that when you have high turnout elections, and this was the highest turnout in, in, in the Netherlands uh, for decades, uh, you tend to get essentially centrist votes, pro-European votes. You don't get the kind of, you know, rejectionist, anti-immigrant type popular sentiment that, yes, has a following in the Netherlands and elsewhere in, uh, in Europe, but it is nowhere near constituting the majority. All right, Jacob Kirkhout, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your insight. Appreciate it.